Greetings folks, welcome back to my little corner of the library. Today on the show we're going to be discussing one of the most enigmatic works in uh, 19th century literature. Now my name's Dan, you're watching Bookworm History, and this is The Mystery of Edwin Drood by Charles Dickens. The date was June 9th, 1870, and Charles Dickens was as dead as a doornail. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Now, Dickens' death was not necessarily a surprise. Even though he was only 58 years old, he was in poor health, had already suffered a couple of strokes, and had a mild addiction to medical opiates. The only problem was, he was only halfway through writing his, what would be his final book, The Mystery of Edwin Drood. He had written six of the proposed twelve parts, but the remaining six parts have been essentially lost to time. Now, the book itself takes place in the fictional town of Cloisterham, a uh, thinly disguised version of uh, Rochester. The title character, a young man named Edwin Drood, is an engineer who, as a result of their, uh, the wishes of their deceased parents, is engaged to Miss Rosa Budd, a student at the local school for women. Now, among other things, Miss Budd is also learning music. Her music instructor is Edwin Drood's uncle, a Mr. John Jasper, who also happens to be in love with Miss Budd and somewhat jealous of his young nephew. Now, halfway through the action, Edwin Drood disappears. No sign of him is ever seen again with the exception of his pocket watch and his tie tack, which are found in the local river. Edwin Drood completely vanishes off the face of the earth, and the audience is left wondering whether he was murdered, whether he disappeared, whether he just got up and walked away one day. The only problem is, what we consider to be the mystery of Edwin Drood, the book that you can go out and purchase or read at the local library for yourselves, is only six of the proposed twelve parts that would have comprised the final work. Thus, Drood disappears off the face of the earth, and no one ever seems to know what happened to him. Now the big question that scholars and literaries always seem to uh, come back to is, did Charles Dickens himself know what the ending of the book would be? Now it seems logical that an author would have planned out an entire book before started, he started writing it, or at the very least, have known the major plot points. Uh, however, this was the day of books being published by subscription. Now, you can liken books uh, as published by subscription to the sort of uh, modern-day comics, the way that comics are published nowadays. People uh, would subscribe to a book, and they would be delivered installments of the book as they were published. Uh, again, of the, the proposed 12 parts that would have comprised the final work, uh, and then, uh, upon their uh, release, been published as an entire work, uh, only six of these parts had actually been published. Now, what this allowed uh, writers to do is to look back at the sales figures or feedback for the parts that they had written and just been published and see what the, uh, what the reaction to them was, how they were doing, and this would allow them to make changes further down the line. As a result of feedback from some of his friends, Dickon actually changed the ending to great expectations from what he had originally written to what is uh, now published, uh, now considered to be the, the final ending of the book. Uh, so authors could always go back and, and alter the ending based on what, uh, what people thought of it or how the book was selling. So while it's preferable to say that Dickens certainly knew how the book would end and how the action would play out, there was always that uh, sort of sense that he could always change things at the last minute if he just decided that it would bit make a better ending or if he decided it would sell better. We do have some notes uh, that Dickens made on the work, but of the fifth and sixth parts of the book uh, the, that were actually published and saw the light of day, uh, all we have uh, of his notes are the chapter headings. So we have nothing beyond the sixth part, what was published, uh, to indicate whether or not Dickens actually uh, had fleshed out any of the details of the action beyond uh, the published six parts. What we do have uh, to be able to, to say uh, whether or not Dickens knew the ending of the book are three important points. Point one. Charles Dickens sent the first part of The Mystery of Edwin Drood to Buckingham Palace, and supposedly, in a private conversation with Queen Victoria, told her more about how the book would end. Unfortunately, she did not write down any of this, and uh, as the conversation took place alone between the two of them, uh, we have no record of what was actually said. Point the second. Charles Dickens Jr. actually asked his father flat out, of course Edwin Drood had been murdered. To which the elder Dickens replied, of course, what else would you suspect? And point the third. Dickens, in a conversation with his sister-in-law, friend, and confidant, Georgina Hogarth, uh, actually said, uh, upon Hogarth asking, uh, oh, I hope you haven't murdered poor Edwin Drood, uh, Dickens replied, I have called my work The Mystery of Edwin Drood. 
not the history of Edmund Root. Other indications that Dickens knew what the ending of the book would be come from uh, his notes uh, on the work itself and some early versions of the title. Now, the, the final title was The Mystery of Edwin Drood. However, early titles were uh, The Loss of Edwin Drood, seeming to imply that Drood had in fact been murdered, or Edwin Drood in Hiding, seeming to imply that Drood simply disappeared or was, uh, was in hiding and had just walked away from the action. So, despite the fact that we have some of these, uh, these early titles, uh, they give contrary indications of what the uh, final result would be. So again, when you get to the end of the book, and even after looking into, uh, into research uh, and, and uh, the history of the book itself, we still don't know what happened. Now, over the years, uh, over 30 works have been published uh, on the mystery of Edwin Drood, seeking to finish the book, seeking to explain the action, uh, seeking to tell what happened to poor Drood. Most of them seem to center on the idea that uh, his uncle Jasper had actually, uh, had in fact killed him over jealousy of, of uh, his engagement to Rosa Budd. Um, the, the most famous and certainly the most uh, uh, lighthearted, one of the most entertaining uh, conclusions to the work took place in 1914. Uh, it was actually a stage, uh, stage not, not really a play, but certainly a staged event. Uh, it was entitled The Trial of John Jasper for the Murder of Edwin Drood. Uh, it uh, combined local uh, London authors, um, literary uh, scholars, uh, Dickens scholars, uh, and uh, popular actors and actresses of the time uh, to basically flesh out this trial, uh, presenting evidence uh, gleaned from the book itself as to whether or not John Jasper was guilty of the murder of Edwin Drood. Uh, prominent author G.K. Chesterton of uh, the Father Brown series uh, was the judge for the trial, and George Bernard Shaw was the foreman of the jury. Now, the, the trial itself is, uh, is somewhat whimsical. The whole thing was basically a farce. Um, Shaw chimes in at random intervals uh, with, with uh, sarcastic or witty comments. Um, at the beginning of the trial, uh, Judge Chesterton says that the jury is to hear evidence presented uh, as, far, as far as whether or not John Jasper was guilty, to which George Bernard Shaw replies that if the judge thinks that this jury is going to be swayed by any presentations of evidence, then he is wholly unfamiliar with how juries function in this country. Um, the end of the trial uh, came back fairly inconclusive. Uh, as Shaw said, the, uh, the jury, uh, initially uh, certain members of the jury had opted to uh, acquit John Jasper of the murder because of insufficient ev evidence presented, uh, but more uh, level-headed members of the jury had opted for a verdict of manslaughter uh, simply because they uh, did not wish to be murdered in their beds. Uh, to which Judge Chesterton then uh, held the entire courtroom, uh, himself excluded, in contempt, and dismissed the entire proceedings. Uh, this was after a four and a half hour uh, uh, presentation and play. Uh, it was almost midnight uh, when this whole thing wrapped up, so I think everyone was, was glad to be held in contempt and sent home. Well, that's all we've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, on the way out, hit that subscribe button, give us a big thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, if you have any uh, questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. If you have any ideas uh, or suggestions for books that you'd like to hear us discuss, also feel free to leave a comment. We'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.